Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, college coaches and fans of high school and college football. My name is Coach Anthony Williams. I'm the founder and CEO of a company called Connected Athletics. We are based out of Austin, Texas, and we are focused on using our technology platform to give student athletes, male and female, high school, college and pro, a platform to not have to wait to be interviewed or, or, uh, or, or, or put on social media. They can now tell their own story uh, out to the public, to their fan base, uh, to coaches that are recruiting them, to anybody who wants to listen about who they are on the field, which all fans are, are happy about. But more importantly, who are they away from the field? What are their interests? What are their hobbies? And what do they plan on doing uh, when they get recruited to a certain school? And what do they plan on doing when football is over? So it's a very special platform that me and my partners are very excited in. We've, we've interviewed players from all over the country, male and female, across different sports. Uh, and the uh, the response has been overwhelming from uh, college coaches and, and other and high school coaches who are and parents and players. So I uh, want to get that out of the way. Before we get to our special guest tonight, uh, I want to thank our sponsors. Uh, first one is uh, Buffalo Wild Wings. I think we all love wings, uh, especially when we watch games on uh, Friday or Saturday or Sunday. Uh, Buffalo Wild Wings is also very passionate about helping student athletes across the country use the, the platform to get their voice out. So shout out to Brian Soltis, who's a regional VP. Uh, for Buffalo Wild Wings uh, and, and is a, a big part of the content that we put out on the show about student athletes. Uh, my next sponsor I want to thank is uh, Go Edit Graphics. It's a graphics company based in Nebraska. They provide uh, default template graphics for any high school or college athletic program that wants to add graphics to their outbound communication, whether it's a schedule change, a player spotlight, or any information that comes out of the athletic department. Uh, they can use customized graphics that are fit to their color, their mascot, and everything else to give their their uh, communi their outbound communication a little bit of pizzazz. So I want to thank uh, my guys, uh, Travis and Zach and those guys up at uh, Go Edit Graphics. Lastly, I want to thank uh, my friends over in Houston uh, at I Am Epic. Uh, Epic 24-7 is a new apparel company. Epic stands for Every Play I Compete. Uh, they do high school uniforms, they do seven on seven uniforms, they do a whole bunch of workout gear, very uh, creative in their designs and it's become very popular here down here in Texas. So if you wanna uh, look at some, uh, some different type of designs to get some good workout gear in or you want some different seven on seven uniforms, uh, check out my guy, Stefan Johnson uh, with Epic. Uh, I am Epic 247 is a way to reach him on Twitter and then uh, epic247.com is their website. With all that out of the way, I want to get to a very special guest, uh, somebody who I've gotten to know here recently as I'm evaluating uh, some of the top freshmen in the country uh, to be invited to the FBU Adidas Freshman All-American Game. Let me introduce you to a young man. His name is Anthony Rogers. Uh, he is a very special young man. Uh, he is a class of 25. I know some of you are looking at me like, Coach, you're crazy. We're still working on class 23 and 24. This is an elite young man in class 25. He's an athlete. He can pretty much do it all. He's a running back. He's a receiver. He's electric in the special teams return game. Uh, he's at a Pikes Road High School in Alabama. Uh, he's got a – I love this. He's got a 4.0 GPA, which we'll get into more in more detail. Uh, size right now is 5'7", 5'8", 175, 180. He's been in the weight room this summer. He's put on some good weight. He's a three-sport athlete, football, basketball, and track. So I know, I know college coaches love that. Uh, currently right now, and this, way, this is what makes Anthony special other than his first name. Uh, he's already got four offers, uh, and he's just now a freshman. He's got an offer from official offers that are documented from Georgia, from Auburn, from Alabama State, and Western Kentucky. And for you coaches that don't know about Anthony, you can see his Twitter name right there, Anthony Rogers underscore K. With all that said, let's bring the young man on with us. Anthony, how are you doing this evening? Hey, I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing great, man. I'm looking forward to uh, telling coaches your story. You know, uh, sometimes when coaches call me to ask about some of the athletes uh, that I work with as part of the FBU and the camps that I do, uh, you know, I tell them, hey, you know, class 25 is they got some great players like coach that's so far out there. But the recruiting game is changing and coaches want to get in early on these kids so that when they are playing varsity as a freshman like yourself uh, and they really get into recruiting as a sophomore and junior, they want to already have an established relationship with you, Anthony. And so that's one of the reasons why uh, we put on this podcast. So let's, let's get right into the coaches getting to know you a little bit better. Uh, Anthony, tell us a little about, I want to start with the 4.0 GPA. You know how important academics are in recruiting. Uh, tell us how, what you have done to put yourself in position to get that 4.0. Well, According to my parents, my whole life is mandatory that I keep a 4.0 GPA. I like it. I had to keep academics first after God. So 
goes God first, then academics, then sports. Okay. Tell us, you know, we always hear about the term work ethic. You know, guys, I'm, I'm grinding in the weight room. I'm grinding on the field. Talk about your academic grind. For these uh, young student athletes like yourself that are out there that don't have a 4.0, what's the one thing you would tell them to get their grades up to be anywhere close to where yours are? I tell them that the same amount of work that you put in on the field, you should put more work in into your grades. I like it. That's a great piece of advice. Anthony, tell us, what are some of your favorite classes in school right now? What's, what are the classes that are driving that, that GPA? My math class. I love doing math, and I like my foundation of arts class. Okay. So you're a numbers guy? You like math in general? You've always liked it, or you kind of fallen for it recently? I always liked it because math has been, it always was my highest, my highest grade I've made. Okay, I like it. You know, there's not a student athlete that I've ever worked with, including myself, that didn't have a teacher, a coach, a counselor, an AP who made a difference to us academically. Think about all the way back to elementary, middle school, and now in high school. Name a teacher that's had a positive impact on you academically. Um, Take your time. In middle school, our coach, Coach Diary, he always came and checked back on our grades, made sure we had the right grades, let us know we're slipping on our grades, what has to come up. And if our grades got too low, we couldn't even play sports. Okay, that's good stuff. Yeah, those kind of people are important. The, the people that stay on top of you and the people that make learning fun in the classroom, just like football is fun on the field. So I uh, appreciate you sh uh, shouting him out like that. I know you're very early. Heck, you're just now just starting your freshman year. But do you have an idea? Have you and your parents talked about what you might want to major in when you get to the college level? Yes, sir. I like to major in biochemical engineering. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, you're talking to an engineering graduate myself uh, that is an electrical engineer. So I love hearing that. Tell us what drives that interest. What, what piques your interest in that specific engineering uh, discipline? Because that's what my brother does. Nice. Okay. Uh, tell me a little bit about, you know, one thing that coaches want to understand, Anthony, is their athletes that they recruit, what their learning style is. Tell these coaches, are you more of a visual, verbal, or hands-on learning style? In school or on, in the football? In school. In school, I'm more of a visual learner, but I can also use physical learning. Okay. Now, on the field, does it, is it the same or does it change when you get on the football field? It's the exact same way on the field as well. Okay. So with you being a visual learner, I'm sure you're a big film study guy, huh? Yes, sir. Okay, good, it's good, good to know. Um, tell us, you know, high school, you're doing a great job, got a 4.0, you probably had it for a while. Well, let me ask you, have you always been an excellent student or did you flip a switch somewhere in fifth, sixth, seventh grade? Ever since I was little, I've been trained up to always have good grades. Okay. Tell these coaches, when you do have a class that's a little bit harder, I don't know if you're taking AP class yet or whatever, but a class you're struggling, what do you do as a student to turn that grade around. Well, tell us some of the two or three best practices you use uh, to, to turn uh, bad grades into good grades. I have this method my parents taught me. It's called the fold. So like you fold the sheet of paper in half and you write the question on one side of the paper and you write the answer on the other side of the paper. And so like, you don't even have to give people the quiz, you quiz yourself. And you can always, you can take it anywhere. You can put it in your pocket slip it out at lunchtime whenever you need it. And I also um, communicate with my teachers if I need help. Yeah, I like that. Hey, are you student athletes out there that are struggling? Uh, GPA way below 3.0, that's a good one, the full technique. Write the question down on one side, answer on the other, and throughout the day, keep peeking back and forth. And uh, you can tell by Anthony's GPA, uh, that is a process that works uh, very, very well. So I, I love that, uh, Anthony, it's a great share from you. Hey, tell us, let's switch over to learning more about you personally. Tell us about your family. You've already talked about your mom and dad and how they put a, a big focus on academics. What yes. do they do for a living? Are they former athletes? And then tell us if you have any siblings. Okay, so my mom, she's an accountant. And my, my father is in the um, art field and the barbering. And okay. my, my brother attends the University of Alabama and he studies chemical engineering. Wow. My sister is the captain of her cheer team and she's getting ready to graduate as well. So you're the baby of the family? I'm not the baby. I also have younger siblings, but they're okay. way, way younger. And were your uh, college coach boys want to know kind of the background? Mom and dad, were they athletes back in the day in high school or college or no? My mom ran track back in the day. Okay. And my dad was good, but he never played. 
Okay. And then what yes. about your siblings? Any of them play any sports in high school? Yes, sir. My brother, he did basketball. And my sister does track and she does soccer. She's a cheerleader. Okay. And cheer is a sport because my wife was a cheerleader and ran track and it's, they do things. I'm like, there's no way I can do that. So uh, good. So it's always good. Most athletes always have other family members uh, that wear sports and athletics is involved. So it's good to hear that. Uh, tell me a little bit about, uh, you know, Anthony, you, I'm sure you, you know, you work out hard at practice. I'm sure in the off season, you probably work out. Uh, but when you have some free time, homework is done. There's no workouts. There's no game. There's no practice. What do you like to do when you do have some free time? Uh, well, that I usually do work out a lot in my free time, but if I had to say, I it'd be like spending time with my friends and family on like vacations and stuff. Okay, all right. Um, you know, Anthony, you know how important social media has become in, in recruiting right now. You've got a very active Twitter page. Uh, for the coaches that haven't visited your Twitter page yet, tell them now what are they going to see? What kind of message are you putting out there about yourself, your team, your community? What are they going to see when they go through your timeline? You go through my Twitter page, it's a lot of athletic accomplishments on my Twitter page. So you basically see all my athletic accomplishments. You can also see my academics. Okay, that's good stuff. Um, tell me a little, little bit of kind of uh, lighter questions here. What is your all-time favorite sports movie? Could be any sport. What's your favorite sports movie? It's Remember the Titans, and I also – like watching, it's not a movie, but All American. Okay, yep, on Netflix, I like it, okay. Uh, what's your favorite food? I like wings. Okay, all right, Buffalo Wild Wings, happy to hear that. Uh, I don't know if you're into uh, Marvel or DC, but if you could be a superhero, which one would you be and why? I wanna be the Flash because he's fast. Okay, I like it, I like it a lot, okay. Um, so personally here, tell us, you know, you're still very early, I know, but uh, when it comes time to make your decision and what you'll commit to, who will be involved in that process? Who in your circle is going to be involved? It'd be my mom and my dad. Okay, good to know. Um, did your mom and dad go to college? And what school did they go to if they did? They attended Alabama State University. Alabama State, okay, I like it, okay. Um Tell me a little bit about, uh, you know, like I said, I, I know this is very early, but, you know, you're very involved in it already, but what are uh, some of the things that will factor in your decision on where you'll commit to, whether it's next year, the year after that, or whatever? What are some things that are important to you that you want out of college? I just want them to treat me right and, like, mm -hmm. treat me fair. And I want it to feel like, feel like I'm comfortable. I want to be comfortable. Mm-hmm. OK, that's very important. Yeah, you got to be comfortable for, to learn and to play your best in the field. Uh, you talked about both your parents with the Alabama State. You're from Alabama. A lot of coaches right now that always call me, hey, is that kid open to leaving the state or does he want to stay you know, close to home? What, what, what are you thinking? Are you OK with leaving uh, your home state or you want to kind of stay more close to home so your family can see you? Where are you at on that? It, I'm OK with leaving. OK. All right. Yes, that's good to know. OK, um, you know, it's important, you know, uh, every athlete loves playing in front of a packed stadium, uh, especially in football on Friday nights or whenever you play. But tell these coaches, what are you doing to give back to those people who come and cheer for you maybe on a Friday night? What are you doing to give back to the community in your neighborhood? Are you involved in church, a nonprofit, Boys and Girls Club? What are you doing to give back to those people in your community? Um, I go to church every Sunday and Wednesday and I try to I try to attend as many Little League football games I can, and I hold the chains for the kids. Mm. You know, uh, as, a, as a man of faith myself, let me just ask you, um, tell me how going to church and having that relationship with the Lord, how it makes you humble. Uh, let's keep it real, Anthony. You and I watch a lot of high school, college, and pro games, and it seems to be coming more about me, and, and nobody wants to celebrate with their other 10 teammates. They're running to the crowd. They're pointing to the camera themselves. Tell us about how your relationship, being involved in the church, and how your own relationship with the Lord plays into how you display yourself as an athlete on the field. Yes, sir. Um, when, so, like, when you go to church, it, it teaches you to be humble. And, like, anything you do, it's all, it always comes from God. You didn't do it alone. Right. So I, you thank God while you're on the field and stay humble and don't get too high. I love that. I, I love that answer because I, I'm getting tired as an older the old head in football, former player and coach, you know, I get tired of seeing these guys running from their teammates, go to the yeah. camera and make it a me sport. And the thing I love about football, and I think you feel the same way, is that it's the greatest team sport there is. 
Uh, you as somebody who knows that, you know, whether you're a running, a running back or receiver, you can't be successful unless the other 10 guys do their job. I always yes. tell people, if you think football is an individual sport, you got it wrong. You need to go run track. No disrespect to track or some of these tennis or golf, but football, no one man can completely do it all. So I love that you have that perspective. That, that uh, That's a big part that college coaches want to know about you. Uh, tell me a little bit about, um, you know, Let's say you have uh, you're gonna have another four great years here in high school, four great years, three or four years in college. When you're done with football, whenever that is, whether it's after a ten year career in the NFL or after college, what do you want to? What do you want your life to look like, personally and professionally, when football is all done? Um, I want to have a wife and kids, and I like to be. I like to work my way up to a college football coach. Okay, so the end goal is to be a coach in, in college. Okay, I like that. Why is that? What, what is it about coaching that, that I mean, you're, you're a numbers guy, you're going to have this engineering degree. Why football, in your own words? Because I, I just love football. Mm -hmm. you know, when, I, when I'm, I help train my little brother when he does football, I just, I like how it is. And I, I really just don't want to get away from it. Yeah, hey, I completely understand. I told you earlier, I'm an engineer by trade. I work in high tech during the day and I do all of my football stuff at night on the weekends. And uh, it's the best of both worlds. I love giving back. I love what football has taught me from a life school standpoint so that I can share it with others. So I think you're on that same path. I really love hearing hear you say that. Um, tell me, do you have a favorite either Bible verse or quote? And if you do, what is it? Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I love it, man. That's one of my favorites also, Anthony. I love that you have that, man, because that is so true. Uh, you can work out all you want. You can work with a trainer. You can do all these things, but unless the, unless the Lord's got in your path, man, you're not going to be successful at it. So I love that you are so grounded and understand that. Um, tell me, this is one of my favorite questions. What's your all-time favorite sports memory of yourself? Maybe it was Little League. Maybe it was Pop Warner. Maybe it was at basketball. Maybe it was track. What's one moment where you say, yeah, I did that? Well, in my first high school game this year, like in the in the first two quarters, I had three receiving touchdowns. Wow. And I had like 250 something all purpose yards in the first half. And then in the third quarter, and we're getting the third quarter, I ran back a 98 yard kick return. Oh <laughs> and I didn't even play, I ain't played the rest of the game. And I had like I had 360 something all purpose yards. And that was really wow. exciting. It's really exciting for me because I didn't really expect that to yeah. happen in my first game. Wow, that's that's exciting. I mean, uh, you know, Anthony, kind of let's expand on that. You know, there's not there's a lot of freshmen that would love to play, even be on the varsity team. Forget about playing. What what's that what's that like going from eighth grade youth football to playing and starting and having a big impact uh, as a freshman on varsity? What's that like? It's a it's a great feeling, yeah. You have to work hard to to do good in high school. Like in middle school, you can really rely on your natural ability, but when you get in high school, you actually have to work for it. Yeah, tell us about that first moment when you figured out that hey, I I'm a ninth grader, but I can play on on varsity. Was it your speed? Was was there a certain part of the game? What was it with that get? Because every every you know this is an athlete. Unless you have confidence in yourself, you won't have confidence in the field. So when did you have that moment where you said? Yeah, I'm a freshman, but I can play with these guys. Um, it was at practice when I saw I could hang with them, mm -hmm. with the with my starting defense. And we run this thing called inside, and uh -huh. it's basically running backs versus D line and linebackers. Right, inside drill. Yep. Yeah, and I saw I was doing good against them, so I felt I actually felt like that. That's when I could compete with high, on the high school level. Anthony, talk about that balance. And you know this, I'm sure you're going through it now in this early part of the season. You're a freshman, but you've got seniors and upperclassmen that you have to respect in the locker room and on the field, uh, but you're contributing as a freshman. What is that balance like? How are you showing respect to those upperclassmen, but still you know, being a leader on your own as part of the team? Could you repeat that? What, what's it like to, to balance, you know, re respecting your upperclassmen, your seniors who have been there for four years, uh, compared to you being a freshman coming in, because most freshmen don't, I mean, most kids don't play varsity until sometimes they're a junior. What's that balance like of showing respect, but also being a contributor to overall team success? I make, I just make sure I stay humble no matter what. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't do a lot, all that celebrating. I don't talk down on them. And I make sure I motivate them throughout practice and in the games. That's a great methodology. That is exactly how it should be done. That's awesome. 
Uh, this is another one of my favorite questions, but uh, Anthony, what's your why? Why do you love football? Why do you want to be so good at it? Why do you want to do it when you're done with it? Why do you love the game the way you do? What's your why? I like football because it just, it shows me how to be a better person overall. Mm -hmm. It taught me patience. It taught me how to be cooperative with people and a lot more stuff. That's why I yeah. like football. Totally agree, Anthony. I think uh, football, as I said earlier, is the greatest teacher of life skills. Uh, and you know, I do a lot of work with uh, helping student athletes get uh, jobs. And I talk to all these hiring managers and HR people, and they love hiring student athletes, specifically football, because of what we go through. We understand adversity. We understand teamwork. We understand maybe taking an L on Friday and still showing up to work on Monday. There's so many different things uh, that the, the the character set, the skill set of a football player absolutely co uh, correlate with being a successful CEO or being a successful lawyer or teacher or coach or whatever. So I, I love that you understand that at such an early age. Uh, tell these coaches, do you have a nickname by your family or friends or do you just go by Anthony? What's your nickname? Well, my nickname is Big Daddy. Okay. All right. I like it. Okay. We'll be able to use that. Uh, and then tell me, you know, as you go into your, your freshman year here and you're, you're playing multiple positions, I, I kind of, I want you like with your film, I had you as an athlete, uh, but what's, what's your favorite part of football? Do you like being a running back? Do you like being a receiver? Is it the return game? What's your favorite part about football right now? I like it all. My, my best feeling is just to score a touchdown. Okay. All right. I like it. And then tell me a little bit as we move into recruiting here. Uh, <laughs> it's one of my other favorite questions that coaches love. How would your teammates describe you as a teammate? What would they say about you if somebody was to ask them, hey, what is Anthony Rogers like? What, what, what do you think they'll say about you? They would say that I'm a great team player, a great team player, and they, they'll say that I motivate them a lot. Okay, I like it. That's what you want to say. I know you're just a freshman right now, Anthony, but you've got obviously going to be one of the top kids in the country in your class. But uh, from your standpoint right now, I'm about a third way through the season, what do you consider your strengths as a football player? And what are some of the things you want to work on before the end of the season? My strengths are that um, I'm just an overall athlete and I have great football IQ. My, okay. weak my weakness is my diet. I got to stop eating all those sweets and stuff. I love the honesty. Uh, I can tell you from my oldest son who played in the NFL for six years uh, with the Buffalo Bills, uh, even pros have that same problem. Every once in a while, you just want to go grab something from Whataburger or a pizza. And as you get to that elite level, you have to figure out that what you put in your body will absolutely have an outcome and how, what kind of output you get. So I'm glad you understand that as a young player. I love your honesty on that because a lot of guys, well, oh, no, coach, I always eat well. No, you don't. I saw you at the, you know, the McDonald's here like a couple of days ago. So I love that. <laughs> Hey, um, tell me, what, what motivates you? What motivates you to be the best student athlete and the best player you could be? Is it your family? Is uh, somebody in your, in, your, in, your, in, your, in your family? Or what, what drives you? What, who motivates you? It's my family that motivates okay. me. I have athletes in my family, and I have people in my family who are high in, in the academic field. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's, that's usually what it is. It, is there anybody outside your family that said that you've gotten to know maybe a grandfather or maybe a former coach and said, hey, you know what, I'm, I got to do it for coach. He, he taught me this or my grandfather, my uncle taught me that. Is there anybody else outside your family that motivates you? No, sir, it's always been in the family. Okay, I like it. You keep it real. Okay, I like it. Um, tell me, and this is another one of my favorite questions, but um, do your teammates and coaches see you as a dependable player? Somebody that will be on time for practices, be on time for film study, be on time for position meetings. Uh, how would they describe you as, a, would they describe you as a dependable player? Yes, sir. They would describe me as a dependable player. And tell me why that's important to you. I feel like it's important because if you're not a dependable player in certain spots in the game you and you haven't been to practice, you won't even know that you wouldn't know what to do. But if you're a dependable player, you know what to do. You're always on time. So whenever they need you for anything, they can throw you right in there and you know what to do. Yeah, um, I'm smiling right now, Anthony, because you're so wise at a young age. I want to just go ding, 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 ding. You get it more than some older upperclassmen, I understand. A lot of kids complain about not playing in the game and the coach doesn't love me or he's sleeping on me or the recruiter's sleeping on me. And at the end of the day, if you're not a dependable, trustable player that a coach can trust, 
in the fourth quarter late in the game that you won't jump off sides or, or get a personal foul penalty, they're not going to put you in the game. It's not just what kind of athlete you are. It's do you put the team first? So I love that you understand that at such a young age and can articulate that, man. I'm, I'm so impressed. Uh, tell me, you know, I always put players, Anthony, into a couple of different buckets. There's those players that love to practice and then play the game on game night. And there's those who just love to play the game on Friday night. Which one are you? I love practice. I enjoy practice. What is it from what what helps you play better on game day uh, that you learn in practice? What is it that you love about practice? I just like to work. Okay. What about uh, you know you were talking about film study earlier? Uh, talk a little bit about that. So there's the on field preposition with practice and plays and schemes get ready for a game, but then there's always that film study. I, I'm yes, a big sir. believer that film study gives you an advantage before the, the, the game even even kicks off. Tell us about what some of the things you look for when you're doing film study, when you're, when you're trying to break down another team's defense or their special teams or whatever. I look, I look for the best player on the defense in film study so I can, I can help my teammates know what to do and if I need them to help me with that player in film study or what do I need to do with their best player. I look at the defenses and I just I look at it and see what type of reads I need to make based on the game plan that we're doing this week. And I also look at our previous games to see mm -hmm. see my flaws and what I need to do to get better. <laughs> Anthony, you're, I, I say this is your parents will know this term. You're like an old soul. I mean, you're 14, 15 years old, but you absolutely get it. That is, it is the perfect answer. That is exactly right. You no, know, film helps the mental part of the game. A lot of players your age and older think, well, I'm faster, bigger, stronger, and can jump higher than anybody else. Well, guess what? As you move up through the ranks and get to uh, the higher upper levels, Everybody is big, everybody is strong, everybody is fast, and everybody can jump out of the gym. The difference becomes your mental preparation, uh, which is why Tom Brady is playing at 88 years old, or however Tom Rose did, Tom Brady is. So I, I love that you understand that. Uh, tell me, is there a certain player that you pattern your game off of uh, in college or in pro? And if, if so, who is that? There are two players. So in, at the receiving position, I look at Tyreek Hill. Okay. Because he's, yep. he's explosive and he's fast, and I try to pattern that behind him. And that running back is Christian McCaffrey because yeah. he's explosive and he's fast as well. Yeah. And I try to pattern my game behind those two athletes. Yeah, I, I love both choices, and I happen to know the second one personally. Uh, Christian McCaffrey was a big part of FBU, uh, played in our freshman game, played in our All-American game, and, and came to a lot of camps even after he blew up in recruiting. That kid has a work ethic, probably one of the best I've ever seen. He never let the, the accolades, the number of offers, or how much attention was going to get to him. He always came, and every camp he came to and every event he came to, he just grinded. Like he's one of my – out of all the – Thousands of athletes that work with coaching and everything. He's one of my favorites. So that's a great choice. Like, you know, you definitely fit that same kind of pattern here. Hey, as we finish up here, tell me about um, mental toughness. You know, you, it's a term we throw out a lot in football. Coaches love players with mental toughness. College coaches want to, re, want to recruit kids that have mental toughness. How do, you, how do you define mental toughness? And how would you rate yourself when, on the, on the, uh, on the uh, scale of being mentally tough? Mental toughness is... You have to stay tough in your mind the whole entire game, no matter what happens in the game. So you could be winning. I can be winning 75 to zero in the game. And I'm going to play the exact same way that I was playing the first half, the first snap when it was zero to zero. Vice versa. You could be losing zero to 75. Yeah. I'm still going to work as hard as if it was a, if it was a tie game. Yeah, that's a great, great response. Great answer. On top of that, let's talk a little bit about adversity. Uh, coaches always talk about kids. They want to be able to coach players that understand adversity, which means that, like you just said, whether you're up 75-0 or down 75-0, we're going to work together. We're going to find a way to, if we can't get better in this game, to get better for the next game. Tell us how you define adversity and tell us about a time in your life when you had to overcome some type of adversity. Adversity is when things aren't going your way, but you mm -hmm. still have to find a way to get through it. Yep. So. When in the Little League games, something sometimes it was unfair and the referees were mm -hmm. on our side. And I could see how it negatively affected my teammates. So I gave them, I gave them a talk and I led by example. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we ended up winning the game, even though the refs weren't being fair. Yeah. You know, Anthony, it's it's a perfect response. And it's one of the things I believe that you know, you either win 
or you learn. You never you, you take a loss if you don't learn from the win or loss. And to me, you either win, or you learn to get better for the next week. Because uh, I've been playing the coach's game for a long, long time, and I can tell you that nobody's ever gone undefeated. Uh, Joe Montana's had taken an L. Tom Brady's taken an L. Cam Newton's taken an L. The game is a constant learning process. We're all constantly work in progress. And I love that you understand that at such a young age here. Uh, tell me about, um, you know, uh, you, you're, you talk about you being a three-sport athlete. You play basketball, play track. Tell these coaches about a little bit about that. Uh, what do you, uh, when you're not playing football, what are the other sports and uh, what positions do you play in those sports? Um, the other sports I do is basketball. I do track. I wrestle. Oh, wow. And every now and then I get on the soccer field. Oh my so, goodness. Okay. Well, you, as you know, college coaches love players uh, that, that, that run track. What events do you run in track and what, tell me, well, let me start with that. Why, uh, what, what events do you run in track? In track, I run the 100 and 200 meter dash. Okay. Do you any of the relays? Yes, sir. I do four by okay. one relay as well. And then now tell me what's the one thing from track that helps you become, be a better football player? Track, it just separates you from all of the football players. If there's a football player who runs track, then you, you're going to tell that he ran track. You can see you can see a track runner on the football field. Yep, yep. It, absolutely. It just, it just balances you out, really, in all sports. It, it helps you be in shape for the season. And track is really the, it's the key to all sports. Absolutely agree. And any player that's out there, that's good, they watch this podcast interview, and you've heard me say this before, if you're not running track in the spring, college coaches will not check that box and it will be a red flag. You need, if you're not playing any other sport, you need to run track. And I don't mean you're running in meets. I mean, you're doing the workouts and you're trying to become quicker, faster, build your endurance for football. If you're not running track, it's a, it's a big red flag uh, that could affect your, your recruiting. So I love that you understand that, uh, uh, Anthony. Hey, let's finish with this. We talked about the elevator pitch. Uh, you know, elevator pitches uh, when you have, uh, you know, 20, 30 seconds in front of somebody uh, important, whether it's a CEO or a possible investor or, or a principal that may hire you to be a head coach at a, at a high school. Anthony, look at the camera and tell these coaches why they should recruit you and what you're going to bring to their program. You should recruit me because I work hard on and off the field. I'm a coachable player and I'm willing to fill any position at any time you need me to do it. And I'm going to motivate the team throughout the whole game. Anthony, that's great. Tell us a little bit about the, the student side of that. You're going to be a great athlete in the field, to be a great uh, ambassador for the football program and the department. But what about the school? How are you going to enhance the image of whatever university you're going to? Tell us a little bit about that. I'm going to make sure that I maintain a 4.0 GPA. And if any of my teammates need help, I can help them out as well. Great, man. Love it. Anthony, I am so impressed with you. Uh, this is the first time we've uh, we've talked and we've been talking back and forth on Twitter. But you, first of all, I'll tell your parents that Coach Williams said they're doing a great job. I mean, you are mature beyond your years. You're an old soul, and I mean that in the most positive way. Uh, you are going to be successful whether you play another down of football or not. And I, I can just see that the way you're being raised and, and how you respond to this interview, you're just very mature. Man, I definitely enjoyed this time. I will get this video out to all the coaches. Uh, look forward to learning more about you as we are continue down the road of inviting the top uh, freshmen of the country to the FBU Freshman All-American game. Uh, I think you're definitely on my short list for that. But uh, thank you for your time, Anthony. Really enjoyed it. And thank your parents for letting you come on the, the podcast, okay? Okay, thank you. All right, have a good evening. All right, you too. Yeah, bye. Bye.